This morning we're going to be talking about 1 John 3 verses 1 to 7. That was the second lesson uh, that was read today. You've heard a couple of times uh, this morning already that we're still celebrating Easter. And we are. We're celebrating Easter. And today, one of the texts, the second lesson, talks about heaven. And we're going to be talking about heaven today as we, as we celebrate Easter, as the celebration goes on. You know, one of the things that uh, we all seem to do when someone gives birth to a child in our family, you know what it is, you try to guess, who is that baby going to look like? Or who does the baby look like right now? You know, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas. I wonder, kind of looks like grandpa. Huh? Looks like his dad. Oh, she looks like, you know, great grandma. Huh? Okay, that old, huh? Okay, but so, so aunts and uncles and grandmothers and, and grandfathers comment on the shape of the baby's head, the color of the eyes and the hair, the prominence of, of the nose and the ears and the chin and the cheekbones, and they try to figure that all out. Well, in our text today, in 1 John, the Apostle John is not really talking about who our children will look like. Instead, John is talking about what God's own children, his people, are going to look like in eternity. And this is what John writes, if you read it with me. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like... And we didn't finish it. We're going to finish it in just a little bit. We want you to kind of think about it. So the question we're asking this morning is, what will I look like when Jesus appears? What will I look like in heaven? Now, most of us have asked that particular question, and we want to know, will I, will I look like the way I look now? I hope not. Um, will, will, will I get a new body, and what will the body be like? You know, what will it be like? Uh, will it be different from the one that I had on earth? We have all of these kinds of questions. Now, I don't want to disappoint you because uh, the title was kind of a come on. What will you look like in heaven? Um, if you wanted that kind of an answer, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I don't have any pictures that I can pull out to show you how you're going to look. That just isn't the way it is. God doesn't tell us those things. This is a question, though, a question that asks a lot more than what will be the shape of my nose and the color of my eyes and hair in heaven. It really, this question is really asking how my whole future is going to look like, what it's going to look like. What about my life right now? What about my future? What about eternity in heaven? While we are waiting for Jesus to come back, we, we ask those questions. What will all of this look like? Now, time, time does not always bear out our predictions, does it? Faces change, and children take on different characteristics than what we uh, saw when they were young, and sometimes they don't turn out to look like grandpa. Maybe that's a blessing. Sometimes it is easy to see the face of the future in our children, and other times it is hidden with uh, glimpses of what will come. And many times the future that we think will be best for our children is not what happens, it's not the reality of their experience. And this is also true for us, God's children, the people of God, Christians. You see, Scripture often reminds us that here on earth we really have a, uh, a vague glimpse of what will come. St. Paul tells us this. Read these words with me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. So we're not going to really see everything. It's kind of a blur. The end result is beyond our human imagination. And as much as we want to know the future, we actually are limited by our humanness, our sinful human nature. It puts up blinders. And because of sin and the corruption around us, we don't see clearly. But what sustains us 
is the promise that we get from God of his presence in our lives. We know that God has already made us his own. He has marked us in our baptism. He says, you belong to me. I love you. I'm going to take care of you. You're part of my family. He offers us the forgiveness of sins. He offers us the assurance and certainty that heaven is a reality, not just wishful thinking. And so we cannot see beyond this, what God has told us, except through the eyes of faith. And the scripture tells us that we, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Our confidence rests in the promises of our faithful God who says to us that he will be with us to the very end of the age. And for many of this, sometimes this is a problem. Some of us really want to know about the future. We insist that God reveal everything to us. Or we say, if he doesn't speak to me personally or let me know what the future's like, I'm just not going to trust him or believe in him. Now, we saw this happen last week in our, in our gospel lesson when doubting Thomas did not believe that Jesus was alive. And then when troubles seem to touch our lives, when the hurts and the challenges of life come, we become like Old Testament Job. Remember Job? And he demanded of God to know why these things were happening to him. And sometimes we're like that. Why is this happening to me, Lord? But God does not always explain every detail about himself and about the future. Instead, he points us to Jesus. And now we're going to read that verse once again, but we put the, all the words in there now. Let's read it. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when Jesus appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And yes, the answer to our question has come in our Bible passage today. We shall be like Jesus. Now, my friends, it is just enough. It's enough to see Jesus. It's enough if we have faith in Jesus. It's enough if we trust him for the forgiveness of our sins. It's enough if we believe that because of his death and resurrection, he will take us to heaven. If you have this faith, if you are centered in Jesus Christ, this faith is centered in him, then you have enough. Now, the future of our lives is really like a painting. The painter, however, is God. And the future is going to be revealed in God's time, not ours. And so our lives do not unfold with a clear path into the future. We cannot see into the future. Instead, we are left simply to trust in the God who has our best interests at heart. And because we are not the painter, we can't always see or, or make out um, what is on the canvas in that picture of our lives. And so it seems that it goes slow at times. Is anyone really in charge of my life, we ask some days when we get up? But God calls us to be patient and to wait for his work to be revealed. Now, often it is a hidden art and a hidden work. It's sort of like the picture, the painting, or the statue that's covered with a sheet. And then at the dedication, they pull the sheet off and you finally see the picture. You've waited so long and you finally see it. Now at the last few Missouri Synod National Youth Gatherings with about 35,000 young people in a stadium, there has been a painter guy that they call Jesus, the Jesus Painter. We have a picture of him too. And in jeans and in a t-shirt he comes to do his thing he he brings house paint and he has a huge canvas there's a picture of him on the screen there as a three inch brush and he slaps the paint on and it seems like it's a random fashion some of you have seen him in person it doesn't take forever but the time passes slowly as he paints with his brush and with his hand and it seems like the painting is just nothing but at the very end, it becomes so clear. It's the face of Jesus 
That's what he paints. No matter what he paints, no matter how it starts to look out, it always ends up with the face of Jesus. So God is the painter in our lives. And the shape of our lives is known to God and by the Spirit who is at work in us. And so he gives us just a glimpse, but not much more, of the future. And though it is hidden, we trust in the Lord who's painting our lives in the image of Christ. And so the old me is going and the new me arises by the grace of God flowing through my baptism by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that new me, it looks an awfully lot like Jesus. And if it isn't, something is wrong. This is God's work, painting on the canvas of our hearts and on our lives. And so God is painting Jesus on the canvas of your life. And then he paints Jesus on the canvas of other Christians. He's giving them the same new identity that you received at your baptism so that they would become like Christ, that they would live for Christ. Remember, remember what John the Baptist said when Jesus came on the scene to take over? He said, he must increase, but I must decrease. That's true. Jesus needs to increase in our lives. And right now, you and I, we live in the tension of waiting and trusting. Waiting, waiting and trusting. And throughout this waiting and trusting, God gives us help. He gives us his written word and the visible word of the sacraments. And God uses these means of grace to paint Jesus Christ into our minds, into our hearts, into our lives. But most of the time, we only see those twists and turns, the setbacks and the ups and the downs of life instead of the completed final picture. And yes, we do see glimpses of his final masterpiece. And once we are in Christ... Our lives do begin to look like his. We see glimpses of our new life in Christ as we live, as we act, as we show mercy to others, as we show love to those around us, as we follow God's will and not our own. But you know, on this side of heaven, that's not always perfect. And this is true not only of people, but it's also true of individual congregations like ours, like St. Peter's. God is painting in us as well. We are not yet complete. We are not what we shall be. Nor are we what we were in the past. But always we are becoming. As the painter's canvas slowly unfolds the image, uh, the image of what the picture will be, but that picture is and always is Jesus Christ. What a joy that is. The Old Testament writer Habakkuk says, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith, as I said before, not by sight. So we say, stick in there, hang in there, hang in there as individual followers of Jesus Christ. Hang in there as congregations of his people as a church that is in mission for Jesus. We are all works in progress. We are saved in Christ. We are saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. This was when he sacrificed his life for us and he rose again so that we could live. So we already know the answer now to the question, what will I look like in heaven? And maybe it's not exactly what you thought we would be talking about. But we already know that the only answer that we need, the only answer that counts, is that we shall be like Jesus. And yes, you and I are called to wait for the rest to be revealed to us when he comes. And the Bible says that he will transform our lowly bodies to become like his glorious body. And what a wonderful day that's going to be in heaven when we finally see all of this fulfilled and we get to see the whole picture. In the meantime, live for Jesus. Serve him. 
Show love towards your family and your neighbor. Show mercy to those who are in need in the world. In the meantime, he's going to keep us in the faith. He's going to give us a passion to serve. And he's going to fill us with joy as he keeps us in Christ. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.